and that's where I will need your help and everybody's help in terms of how we build that behavior, what is the behavior in your team, how we can help do that or how we can help better that. So some statistics around you know what what's there and it's it's not a statistics from me it's from the uh, you know there's a source that comes up here it says dot com info over 50 percent of the customers uninstall the apps within seven days of install installation and I'm talking about mobile app right do you know why do you know why 71 of percent of the customers uninstall apps due to the annoying notifications we all see that you know a lot of notifications comes up we also see that the apps apps get crashed they get freeze especially on android there are thousands of android devices it, it gets freeze pretty often right 62 percent of the customers uninstall the apps because of all of these phrases and crashes why do you think so and why do you still think that you know what what could be the definition of qa after seeing all of these statistics, there should be some definition of QA. Why are we still seeing these many uninstallations of the apps and, and people moving away from our apps? Anybody? What could be the definition? No, no, continuous feedback should be uh, enrolled in this, I mean, uh, by making the users to use the app before it is getting launched. Right. And what specifically drives these customers to uninstall the app. Competing the features more than this, so they go on to that and they delete the older Great. one. Great. I think all of this leads to the quality of the product as such, right? The quality of the features, the support that you we talked about. Support is also a feature in the product, right? It, it, it's a responsibility of the quality team to test that as well. Competitors, user experience all of this is talks about the quality of hands up with people who have using iphones how many of you use google maps and not iphone apple maps i think all of us right what is the reason behind it? Better experience in terms of the this is Apple Maps as opposed to Google Maps. Why do you have to install a, another app called as Google Map on your iPhone when you have the pre-installed Apple phone? It, take, it takes away the memory, like you said. It takes away a lot of other parts as well. And I don't have to tell you about Google. It takes lots of things from you, right? <coughs> So, how a QA can be in Agile? What could be the role of QA in an Agile QA? Why do you think we, we do that? It's one product. Yeah. We call it Agile. We call it Agile, but that is not actually a pure Agile. Right. Okay. So, when they started, uh, they think QA does not have a lot to do. Uh, once they deliver one story, then QA start working. So, there's a gap in the features, piece that we few people follow. So that's where the gap is, and when you consider growing and all, so they are they are very concerned about like what is there that TV document, what needs to be updated in the course side. But for the for the view, it is all about the business and the product. So mm -hmm. that's where the gap is, the way the mindset is there to develop that code and to test that code. So there's a big mindset there. Correct. What can we do to change that mindset? Uses. Agile is two weeks, friends. Okay, and does it go to production right after two weeks? Yes. Okay. Okay, great. Yeah.
Right. So all of this leads us to, you know, uh, having a mindset of eliminating the defects, right? Not identifying them. That's where I'm leading towards, right? Concentrate on the product quality rather than identifying bugs. I might be thrown out of this room because most of the testers mentality is to, okay, how do, how do you appraise yourself? It's, it's the end of the year, we all have to write appraisals and stuff, right? Okay, I have logged these many number of bugs, I have logged these many automation tests. Is this what you want to appraise of yourself? Think through it and then come back, right? In my opinion, I would say it's, it's about eliminating the defects rather than, okay, I have logged thousands of defects, I have scripted thousands of automation scripts. I, I am a great automation estate because I have written, what, thousands of automation tests. Can you tell me, out of those thousands of automation tests, were they helping you to identify any product defect? Most cases, no. Because most of the time what we are doing is regression automation. Exactly. Regression is something the cracker and, and went away while the developer is, poor developer is just sitting at there and, and fixing it, right? We do one week releases, by the way. And, and I'll come to how we have achieved it. So it's, it's better to uh, basically work with everyone at the start, like you said. How do you do that? How do you take part in, in the design discussions? What do you do to make sure all of this is taken care of? This is what we talk about, right? So it's not about, again, I would repeat that it's not about logging the bugs, rather eliminate them, go with your developer, you know, sit with them right at the start, get it done. We are part of the team right at the start, right at the start of writing a particular test case during the refinement. Somebody talked about refinements, right? We are all human. We, as we are part of these refinements, we tend to forget that, okay, I'll, I'll see, you know, boundaries surrounding around the boundaries. So what we do is, Put those cases on the ticket itself. You know, there's a user story. Put all of the use uh, use cases, be it from functional point of view, security point of view, and everything. Unless the acceptance criteria is met, and the acceptance criteria would have all of these checks that you know these are all the tests that were there from functional security performance and everything. Only then the ticket gets moved to done. So. Technically, it, it is attached to your definition of done, right? So until it is done, the ticket is not done. So the, the developer will have that luxury to look at the test cases while he is building up. While he is building up and, and then, you know, he will look at those test cases, run through all of those test cases himself and, and then, you know, maybe he'll look for, okay, this is a test case that I have to look while, while building it. Let me let me run through it and then try to you know close this off. We also write the test cases arts, be it unit testing, be it integration, be it system. We all know about that testing pyramid as well, right? And like he was talking about, we all set and fix the end-to-end -end UI automation test. Why do we do that? We can we can simply say that you know minimize the top end of end-to-end -end UI test and keep adding on to the automation of unique integration of that, be a part of that. Don't throw it to the developers, be a part of that in terms of identifying them, writing them, making sure that if you are doing all of these, then yes, you will. If not, you will like, you know, sit and fix all of those automation bugs. No, it's it's not your traditional job, right? You'll have to learn, you'll have to evolve. So these are all the things that, that you know, helps you in, in identifying, yeah. So then who does that end-to-end We follow the Pareto principle, right? Uh, we all know Pareto principle about 80-20 rule, right? So the 80-20 rule uh, says that not all user stories needs to be tested by QA. 80% of them are tested by dev. 20% of them are tested by QAs or the SDs. So that's how, and, and it's not a fixed number that, you know, out of 10, I will do only two. I have done two, I will not test the third one. 
It's not a fixed number as such. Like Divakar was saying, it all depends, right? So it all depends based on the complexity of of the use case or the user story. You put all of them, all the test cases and everything to them. The developer tests themselves. If it's just a small feature like you know introducing an email path, why do you want to write all of the automation test cases? Or why do you want to test it even manually, even functionally? Right? The developer can do it. Right. Exactly. So it's okay. not like sitting with the development. Mm -hmm. In that eighty percent, the developer develops or builds the product. They test we, it. They test it based on the advocacy that we give it to them. Okay. Right. Not all or majority of devs will not have the mindset that QA wants. Right? That's the basic need of the QA, the mindset. Right. Mm -hmm. So it is our responsibility to build that mindset to them. Give your part. Okay. The 80% is being built or developed by them, but you give that input to them that you know this is the way, this is where you need to test your product. Okay. Right at the end of the first week, we release to 5% of the production. We monitor the logs using Datadog. There are a lot of application management tools, monitoring tools specifically, which will give you all the reports. Right. You use them, uh, and then find out you know what are the crashes that are coming up. You have Firebase. You have a lot of other things. My friend's performance site. Those performance people will give you how to give you the performance monitoring in production. What is happening there? And based on that, percent is rolled out today. You monitor it the next day. If there's nothing, you push uh, change it to 25 percent, and then to the complete part. Uh, are we going to explain like the scope will not be finalized for these one week releases? Scope obviously will have to be finalized much earlier. But how? So, I mean, there will be a possibility that yes, we are not reaching to that scope. We are not covering all the parts. Then what will be the strategy for us to do? Covering all the parts in the sense. Covering all the scope and all the requirements of the customer that we want in that uh, during one week cycle. Yeah. So in that particular one week release cycle, we would have to define that scope that you know these are the features that go in. So all of them are devs uh, built up, tested, and everything, and rolled out to production. Today it is done for the five percent of customers. That particular feature, let's say, a payments part, right? One specific payments is there. It is released released to production. Five percent of the customers, you monitor it, and then you increase it to the twenty five percent. So by the end of the two days in extension of week, you would see that. Uh, that particular feature that you have scoped for the weekly release is, in fact, in the production. So it's technically you can say that it's not weekly releases, week plus two days. I would agree to that. Yes. 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 That's what I'm, I'm coming from, right? So it, it, it is more difficult for from the mobile app perspective. On the website, Amazon website, that's what they do on the website perspective, not on the mobile. The mobile has lots more complications, right? That's where we are looking in terms of how to move from the weekly releases to daily releases. Early releases is still long time for us. Also, they may not be releasing critical features. Exactly. 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 Perhaps we can have the discussions during coming here, taking out your time and sharing your knowledge with us.